was going to speak anyway after she started. But I want to welcome you to this first gathering in this group, which is intended to be an extraordinary networking group uh, of speakers and doers and thinkers to come together in New York in interesting venues, meet each other, have their ideas catalyzed, and see what comes of that. Uh, I do that for a living most of the time anyway. Uh, I run and founded the World Technology Network, which is a global association of the most innovative people and organizations in science and technology all over the world. We're best known for our annual World Technology Awards program that we did for many years until the uh, last two years with Time Magazine and Fortune, and now we have a whole series of different media partners around the world, and are no longer working exclusively with them. We have over a thousand fellows elected in uh, 20 different categories that are all the winners and finalists from previous award cycles for the annual awards program. So my job is to identify who is doing the best and most innovative work in every field around the world and to introduce them to each other. So I have a really, really rare job. It's one of the best jobs I could possibly imagine where I get to meet the smartest, most creative people in the world on a regular basis and then connect them. So that's very consistent with what we're doing here this evening. Um, I'm also a huge fan of Z West, who will be returning shortly, um, and her work in London. There she is. Um, and uh, what she does in London and other cities around the world for entrepreneurs is what I do for innovators. And obviously, there's a big overlap. So, um, what I would, I'm sure Z will speak in a little bit. I don't know if you want to say a word or two now. But um, uh, I thought I would pick a topic that's very close to my heart um, to get you thinking about it. Other people are talking about this the last few years. And that's technological unemployment. I've been interested in this topic for many years, mainly in the beginning from a political perspective. If you look at the last few centuries, the history of the world since the Industrial Revolution is the history of what in economics they call creative destruction. It's innovation leading to some industries being destroyed, some in new industries being born, and typically that has meant more net new jobs created than the jobs that were destroyed. The reason it's been interesting politically is that if you don't look at it in the aggregate, the jobs that are lost are usually not jobs that, the, the people that lose those jobs are not the ones that get the new jobs. We forget that, even though net new jobs have been created. So the history politically since the Industrial Revolution has been the history of technological unemployment and the political response from Marx to the German social welfare state to John Maynard Keynes to the Great Society socialism has all been in response to the political unrest and anxiety that comes from the loss of security related to your livelihood. So this is a huge important fact to remember when you think about our time right now. We live in a time where I have given talks about what I call the phase change. We're undergoing a period in history where we're likely to have more science and technology and social change in the next 20 to 30 years than the last two to 3,000 years. The fundamentals are changing. We're beginning to be able to manipulate matter at the elemental level to the point where we can make anything, anywhere, at any time in the near future. And think about how that affects the rules of economics rules that are the basis of human society, the fact that you're stuck with the body you're born with and you're going to die. Culture is based around, directly and indirectly, these ideas. That's changing. Information itself is getting into the elemental. We're being able to understand the informational nature of everything 
analyze it and beginning to manipulate it. And we're getting to the point where we can analyze the human brain in the foreseeable future so well that we will be able to probably, almost certainly, download consciousness itself. Duplicate it, clone it, blend it, etc. Think about the next 20 or 30 years. Think about the pace of change right now. Notice I didn't even mention artificial intelligence. The advances that are coming in artificial intelligence, even if we do not get to sentience by a machine, but just super smart machines able to mimic intelligence, that level will completely alter the economy and the employment marketplace. So when I say we're undergoing a phase change, a phase change is like when liquid water goes to ice or liquid water goes to steam. It's the same thing, but it's totally different. So that, our entire society, our economics, our, all the structures are going to change whether we like it or not. All of the previous innovations in, in uh, technology have replaced the physical labor, even the mental labor connected to physical labor, with other technologies that do that a little bit better. We're now entering the territory where we're getting to, to in the territory of the human uniqueness, which is creative intelligence. And the idea that there are any jobs, almost any jobs, that are immune to what's about to happen is wishful thinking or delusion. So in 2015, I organized the first World Summit on Technological Unemployment with Larry Summers, Obama's former Treasury Secretary, with Joe Stiglitz, uh, the Nobel Prize winning economist and the world's top expert on human equality, with Robert Reich, uh, Clinton's Labor Secretary, and 24 other of the leading thinkers in the world, and all came together to talk about this issue. At that event, by the way, the, the concept of a universal basic income for the first time was fully endorsed by major players. And since that time, that topic of having a safety net for everyone um, is now a huge debate in the tech and economic communities because of what's to come. So I think that it's very important, I don't want to speak for too long, but it's very important that you understand that every business that you're in right now, every job that you yourself do, every company where you work or that you have started, every career that you're hoping for your children, every social program that you're helping is going to be funded by the taxes of your fellow employed citizens. All these things are up for grabs for fundamental reasons. And it's not going to happen in a slow, gradual way. It's going to happen in an exponential way. The human brain is not structured to understand exponential change. The water hyacinth grows in an African lake when it's introduced, and it doubles every day. And you can have a 10,000 square mile lake. And only when the lake is 5,000 square miles of water hyacinths will someone maybe visit from the government saying, what are we going to do when it eventually covers the 5,000 square miles of the rest of the lake? The human brain doesn't understand exponential change, doesn't understand doubling. Doubling and doubling and doubling. And the technologies that we have right now are exponential technologies, and the impact is going to shock us all, and we need to prepare for it. On that shocking note, I would like to introduce anyone else who would like to come up. And uh, I'm going to introduce Joy, one of the organizers. So thank you for having me here. And I was thankfully able, through Jody in the back there, who lives in the building, to arrange for us to meet here on this glorious roof. Thank you very much.